Will Jason ever play that black piano in the background? Or maybe make a beat for us on camera? I mean, if y'all pay me. <laughs> Whatever, we'll, we'll do an episode about you and your music. Yeah. So I mean, yes, the answer is yes. Yeah, get the coins right. <laughs> You have a pretty voice. Do you record music as well? Well, first of all, thank you. <laughs> me, 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 me. La, 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 la. Thank you very much. Yes, I do record music as well. Whenever Ricky Ricardo Menace lets me in the studio so I can get on the mic and drop a few little. Hey, remember that? Remember that Martin episode with Biggie? <laughs> And Gina and Pam were trying to be backup singers and they were go around singing everywhere just to get on the album. That's what she does. I make one beat. She's a little, ooh, ooh, wee. I'm like, yo, let me finish the beat. I don't even know what it's going to be about yet. She but always does that. But that has led to some hits. I mean, occasionally it does, but yo, let me let me, let me me get in my vibe first before you walk around and talk about ooh, ooh, wee. Ugh, it drives me crazy. Anyway, next question. <sighs> Did you choose acting over music since you came from a musical family? Um, I I would just say like I like I do sing, but I ain't no singer, you know. Like I can give you like a a, a verse or two, or a hook. So I would say that's why I chose acting over singing because I just don't have the chops. Are you a boxing fan? Um, I wouldn't call myself a boxing fan because it's not something I watch or know any of the current athletes. So. I actually have boxing on both sides of my family, so I'm a fan of the boxers in my family, but that's about it. Yeah, you? I mean, I'm casual. I'm not like big into it. I've gotten a little more into it since I've been doing, uh, I've been doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for the past four years and I'm dabbling in like boxing MMA, so I pay attention to it a little bit more, but I'm not like heavy into it. Football is my uh Now he been right around here shadow boxing, getting on my nerves. He be doing it in public and people think that he's crazy. Whatever. Almost got us kicked out the spa. Wait. Did I ever meet Muhammad Ali? No, I did not. It says, your uncle's story needed to be told. How did I feel telling it? Um, it actually felt uh, relieving because he has been the butt of so many jokes over the years. And I think that it's been um, a big misunderstanding and not realizing who he was as a person. And for me to get to tell people who my uncle Ernie was as a person was absolutely relieving. How do we entertain ourselves when we're not filming the show? We call each other the N-word. Shut up. Let's do that question again. Yeah. So how do we entertain ourselves when we're not filming the show? We get on each other's nerves. How about that? That's I call what, that's what we do. you the N-word. Anyway. <laughs> your grandfather's story needed to be told, Jason. How did you feel getting to tell your grandfather's story? It's a lot to live up to. Uh, I've always known that he's a great man and I realized that he's shaped a lot of what I do as far as my service and my giving back to my community. So I think that telling his story can kind of give some context to why I am so adamant about being active in my community and giving back. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's in the family, it's in the blood. So, yeah, it was good. Keeping with that. How has your grandfather's civil rights and educational legacy affect you as a growing black man? I'm still growing. <laughs> I'm almost 40 years old. I'm grown. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Okay, so how did it affect you growing up? It just gave me so much to live up to. I, I come from a family of, of very, um, very community-driven folks. My mother, my mother's side and my father's side both have amazing stories and so Again, it just forced me to be more aware of the privilege I've had as far as coming from, you know, having two parents that are college educated. And also with that privilege, as far as me being black and me having this strong foundation that a lot of people in our community don't have, how I must give back. I must give back to what, um, to, to the things that uh, have made me have the life that I have. You know, just taking my stuff and running would be BS. Do you still step? No, I'm retired. <laughs> you retired? <laughs> I never heard anybody say that about stepping. I'm retired. Stepping. You know, I was I was mean in my day. I mean, I can. I'm still in good shape, but no, I I you know, stepping's a young man's game. I'm retired. I'm retired. Yeah, on Founders Day when he was trying to do a little. You know nothing. Don't talk about stuff. 
Don't talk he about. He was out of breath in like 45 look, seconds. This is get, look, get to these okay. questions. <laughs> right. These questions. Why is it important the conversation of slavery, racism, civil rights, and segregation from the past still need to be had today? Oh, Lord. Look, ladies, look, look, this country was founded on 400 years of white supremacy and structural racism and these white folks need to get their stuff together and these black people need, look, I'm not going to go into it. I'm not, <laughs> I'm, you know, actually, I'm not going to say nothing. It needs to be, we need to understand that we live in a society that was founded to oppress us and we need to understand and fight against it. I That's think all. Um, that the conversation never needs to stop going because America is still very racist. Um, we still need to have these conversations at the forefront and white people need to admit racism and deal with it and solve it and stop being racist. So yes, all those conversations are relevant today. And cut the check, reparations. Cut the check, reparations. <laughs>